y'all it's Kimberly and I'm super excited about today's video because I'm gonna explain to y'all what happened today um, today I got to experience Chiang Mai Thailand in a very different way in a very spiritual cultural way um, so I actually booked a tour through Airbnb experiences I'll actually go ahead and put the link down below of the exact experience I had but I was able to have the same morning ritual basically as a Buddhist and it was so cool so I personally do not affiliate myself with Buddhist beliefs um, I have my own set of beliefs but it is a big part of the culture here in Thailand so it's really incredible to get insight on that and to see what Buddhist life is like in Thailand so I had this tour guide named Kiki he was amazing he was so awesome this is my guide, Kiki. I am Kiki. <laughs> I'm a local here. Yeah. Right. I, I, I born here. I live here. Yeah. yeah. And you do tours for people like me that want to know more about yeah, Chiang Mai. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On. I, I like to show my customers to see my beautiful hometown. Yeah. Yeah, it's so yeah. nice. And you do tours on what was the other one? The on Airbnb experiences yeah, and on then Airbnb experience and, and take me tours. Yeah. Yeah, take me tours. Yeah. Sorry, my allergies here are so bad. So Kiki and I met up at 6 30 this morning, super early. The earliest I've woken up since I've been here, and I really recommend if y'all are coming to Chiang Mai, Thailand, wake up early and just get a cup of coffee. Really see what's happening. It's a literally completely different world and it's incredible you see so many hikers walkers um a lot of buddhist people doing their morning routine so i really recommend that you see the morning life here in chiang mai when we met up um we went to go do his morning routine um he said that he does this around twice a week and we went to go um give food to the monks after I die, I want... Wow, this is a good question. <laughs> um, okay, well, I love sweets. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go with... Sweet things. Okay, then I want that one. But we basically went and got food. And the food is very dependent on what you would want your ghost to have um so if you like sweet foods and you give sweet foods to the monks so that way your ghost will have that um so i got sweet foods your girl loves sweet foods and we gave it to the monks and there was some type of prayer involved with that does it matter which one I put which one in? Yeah, no matter. Yeah, I just put the rest in this one. <laughs> Do like this? And think about the one who passed away. And do like this. Yeah, after that, this one. He explained why they do this in Buddhism, and I'll go ahead and put that video here. Yeah. So, what we just did was we gave food. Mm. To, to to the monk to the monk yeah. okay today we done the, the food offering food offering to the monk that is the way of Bud buddhist people yeah yeah and why do you do that because we believe that if we offering the food to the monk that food will be delivered to the one that we love that passed away already in our life it's like a when I miss my grandmom, I like to offer the food to the monk and after that I pour in water to the ground. That water is like uh, I can com communicate to her and, and surely she will receive that food and she will think of me too. And that food will collect, it seems like the bank, the big bank. If I do like this when I still alive, when I die after I die I can eat the food that I'm offering the food to the monk when I was 
alive, you know. So um, I will be not a hungry ghost. Yeah. It's, it doesn't like uh, the one who don't do like this when they still alive. After they die, they will be the hungry, hungry ghost, and they can, and they cannot asking for other foods. They have to waiting their relative to give the food to the monk, and they can eat that food. Right. Yeah. And then when we poured the water on the tree, that helps your ancestors out, mm. right? We have to think about them. It's like, okay, my grandmom, please receive that food. If you live anyway, if even the earth or heaven or anywhere, you have to know that I love you and please receive this food. Okay, good. And like you can help them out even if they are in hell. You can help your ancestors or yeah, yeah. whoever out. Next. It's good for me when I feel like uh, I'm, I'm not okay with, with my life this period. Okay. If I cannot wake up or too, too early like this, it's second chance I can go to the temple. But before 11 a.m. Because we believe that if we want to communicate or uh, offering the food to the monk, the earth, mm, the world of spirit is open until 11. That can, they can receive the things that we give to them. Yeah. yeah. If after that, it's just collect for myself, you know. Mm. Yeah. But if before 11 a.m. is collect for me and it's go through yeah. my grandma. For yeah, sure. Directly too. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. So that was the significance behind what we just did. Thank you, Kiki, for sharing this experience with me. To come to see the beautiful view of Chiang Mai and offering food to the monk with me, Kiki. Yeah. Yes, I'll have the link down below in the description too, okay. so y'all can check out this experience. I definitely recommend it because you get to see beautiful places like this that you couldn't see. Um, through just googling it and uh -huh. getting to know things that you can't find through Google so yeah yeah definitely recommend this and then after that we have like this cup of water and it was poured into another glass and basically with that glass of water we were told to put it onto a tree and this is to help your ancestors out so there's definitely multiple steps to this routine and multiple meanings behind it put it in the, the big the tree Okay. And think about the one who passed away. They will receive this water. Is like a, how to com communicate with them. Okay. They will receive with this water. Yeah, maybe this one. So it doesn't matter which tree. Yeah, and when pure ideas, we we think about them and ask them to receive this one. Thank you so much. Yeah. If we do it like this, they they will feel like a very like cool growing. in their body. Oh. Okay. And they will be happy. Even they in the heavens or in the hell. This one will help them and make them like a <clears throat> like a hurry to reincarnation again, you know. Oh. Mm. So interesting. So with this, like, so with Buddhism, you actually have an opportunity to help out your ancestors, mm. even if they're in, well, no matter where they are. Yeah. Okay. How we lovely. Like, we like to help them. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't know they go to the heaven or, or go down to the hell. If the heaven is okay, we, we don't worry about them. But if someone go to the hell, if we do like this, it means that we can help them to go up, go up, go up more. Yeah. Yeah. But how do you know if they are already in heaven or if they're in hell? Do you know? This no? one is very. That's like God. <laughs> yeah. But some sometimes I dream to them. Oh, okay. Like, uh, I will see. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Kiki did an amazing job at explaining everything to me and what they do and why they do it. 
So um, after that, we went into the mountain and there's this beautiful scenic part of the mountain. Um, and it was like, and it was a place where you would take, hello, hi. You're having your dinner? Yeah. Yummy, what are you eating? Today I'm eating pottage. porridge. Porridge? Yummy. Also, my super Vietnamese from Vietnam. And Vietnamese is called Chow. Are you from Vietnam? Yeah. Cool, I'm going to Vietnam next month. Oh. Yeah, Hanoi? Yeah, I live in Ho Chi Minh City. Oh, cool, me and my friend were supposed to go to Ho Chi Minh, but we couldn't find anywhere to stay, so we're going to Hanoi. Bye. Bye, have a good dinner. Okay, <laughs> that was so cute. Um, so, basically, we went to this very beautiful, scenic route. So beautiful you get to see all of Chiang Mai you can see the old town and it's very square you can see where the air airport is um, so you really get a good overview of the whole city it was incredible and then after that we went to a temple and this was my first temple experience ever and I was so shook it was so beautiful so we went in this elevator that I've never taken an elevator like this it's like a cable car elevator style and instead so of the elevator going down this way it goes like this <laughs> I've never been in an elevator like this before see how tall is it oh wow Oh, you have to pull during daytime with the Chinese group. Like it's when you people here and you're afraid. <laughs> afraid of the Chinese people? Afraid of the people. So we went in that elevator and he showed me around the temple and explained a lot of historical things about Chiang Mai to me. Uh -huh. One is Thai style and another one is Myanmar Burmese style. You know which one is Thai? Which one is Thai? One and two. Okay, that's one and that's two. Yeah. One. Hmm? One? One. One? Yeah. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Because Thai people believe that the Lord Buddha must be simple. The but the Burmese people believe the Lord Buddha like the king, sit on the throne and wear jewelry, go. So only Lord Buddha is the one that gets all of the decoration, the um, ornaments. You see many, many, many statues. That one is representing only one Lord Buddha. Wow. Yeah. It's a place for king and queen of Chiang Mai live there, not Thailand. In the past, we wasn't part of Thailand. Ah, it's a great country. Really? Yeah. Chiang Mai was its own. Chiang Mai is a part of Lanna. We call ourselves Lana Kingdom, but Lana now is the Dai country in no longer anymore. Lana is some part of Thailand, the northern part of Thailand, the southern part of Myanmar, and the small part of China. So when was Chiang Mai officially Thailand? About 150 years ago. So not that long ago. Yeah. Not that long ago. 150 to 200, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because before that, 500 years ago, we was Lana. And we got king and queen, the Lana. And Chiang Mai is the capital city of Lana Kingdom. And this area is like a very civilization at that time. Anyone want to live here? And any enemy want to 
kill us. After that, we we lost. Yeah. We lost for the the Burmese army. The Burmese people and his army like that chased away our king. Go away from this area, and he took the position of the king. Wow. He belonged to Burmese people for two hundred years. Wow. And after that, the king number one and his army moved there. Yeah. Like a yeah, move, move the soldier and chase away, fight with the Burmese army here, and go away. Yeah. And after that, we we was the pass of Thailand from that time, from the king number one. Wow. And now it's king number ten. So does Lana have its own language, or is it? Actually, yes. But now we can only speak. My my grandmom can written down and yeah so the newer generation doesn't speak Even Lana I can just speak but it's not too different with the Bangkok language it's like a 60% similar okay wow oh, the plane. it was super crazy to see this type of culture and to see how other people live their lives every single morning and they are dedicated to this religion um so yeah it was a really eye-opening experience i definitely recommend it to anybody that's here um like i told you before i'll put the link down below i was super excited to tell you all about this and to make this video for y'all so i hope you all enjoyed this if you like this video please make sure to give it a like subscribe and hit the little bell notification so that way you'll see my new video every week and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!